Hey guys, so this is part two of our Lululemon talk. Uh, we're not allowed to do it in store, so we're doing it across Zoom. I'm Dave Emsley, physiotherapist. Dan Hughes is with me again. So quick recap of who I am. I'm a sports scientist, turned physiotherapist, special interest in functional anatomy and how the body moves. Uh, I'm Dan and I am a strength and conditioning coach based in Surrey and also a Lululemon, uh, Lululemon run ambassador based out of the Guildford store. We've already covered what happens if you want to get back into running or if you want to start running. So in this particular segment, we're going to talk about uh, what's going to happen, what, what you can do if it's starting to go wrong. So Dan's going to lead the way. So when a lot of people start to run, it isn't uncommon that they're going to start picking up a few um, injuries or ailments or aches and pains. Um, we do have to be really careful when we do start running that we're not progressing through pain and really pushing through pain um, because that might be more def uh, detrimental than what we realise. Um, things that you need to think about is um, how far into your run has that uh, pain started? So is it started immediately? You know, is it the first couple of minutes? Or have you been running for, say, 15, 20 minutes and that pain has started kicking in and you're thinking, oh, okay, right, um, I need to get this checked out. Um, also as well, where is that pain? Um, it could be, you know, nine times out of ten, lower body. Um, obviously, they're predominantly the, the limbs we're, work, we're working with. But um, there can be other niggles, i.e. sort of lower back, um, upper back, shoulders, things like that. Um, so we need to sort of have a look at where the injury and the pain is located. And then we can sort of break down and analyse what's going wrong. Um, and that's where Dave would come in um, and he's going to touch on this in a moment. He's going to analyse and do a few simple tests to um, test those key areas. And then we can look to integrate potentially a strength and conditioning programme or a rehab programme depending on the ailment. So if I hand you back over to Dave, um, he's going to run through uh, some of the, the common joint tests when we look at runners. Uh, so, as Dan said, it's not unusual to get aches and pains when you start to run. Uh, the big thing that to take away from today is if you are starting to get pain when you're running, don't run through the pain, don't make it worse, do listen to your body uh, and we can react accordingly. So when we're looking at uh, how the body can react, as Dan says, predominantly pains come in the lower body, they come in the foot, the ankle, Achilles, in the knee, in the hip, they can come into your back of course, and uh, it's, not, it's not unknown for people to be running and get headaches or neck pain. I'm going to focus on lower limb today because that's the most sensible area to think about. But this does incorporate one test of the upper body, which I'll talk about as well. So we look at uh, the foot and ankle first of all. Tests, uh, if you're getting pains in the foot and ankle, if you're getting pains in the lower limb, the lower limb is all one long chain. It's the foot sitting below the knee, sitting below the pit, hip, which is attached to the pelvis, which is attached to the spine going up above it. So let's take the, take the ankle and say, is this a problem for you? Now, with the ankle, what you want to be doing is a straight calf stretch. So hands onto the wall, legs straight out behind you, take the upper body forward, keeping the back leg straight, bending the front knee, do it on the right side or on the left side. Is there a difference in tension of the lower limb, one side compared to the other? Is there a tightness restricting your movement that allows your toes to move up towards your shins? You want to do exactly the same test where you've got your hands on the wall, the front knee is bending, the back leg is straight, but then you bend the back knee. By bending the back knee, you're testing a lower area of the calf muscle, the soleus system. And by testing that as well, we want to say, again, is it the same on both sides? Do you have a tension on one side or the other side uh, that we need to act on? If you do have a tension in either of those stretches, then that stretch becomes important to you prior to running and day after day and you want to stretch whichever side was tight predominantly. Great to stretch both sides, but spend more time on the tighter side than the non-tight side. Now, the knee I'm going to skip over, and there's a good reason behind that, which is the knee is a hinge joint that sits in between two points that rotate. So you have a rotation at the hip, and you have a rotation at the ankle as well. The hip doesn't, sorry, the knee doesn't like to turn. And often when we're getting pains in the knee, so whether it's an, a front knee pain, so where the kneecap is, an outside knee pain or classic runner's knee, or on the inside in the joint line, all of those tend to be related to what's happening above and below the knee. 
the knee is not being controlled in the way you want it to be. It's not being allowed to be used as a straight hinge. If it's not being used as a straight hinge and there's an element of rotation being induced into the joint, then that's where these pains and problems tend to spring from. So that's why I'm going to skip up to the hip because what you want to look at with the hip is we've already uh, looked at while running, it does one leg turn out compared to the other. So if, if one leg is turning out, turning out compared to the other when we are running, what I want to do is get yourself standing so your feet are pointing straight ahead. If you turn both your toes, sorry, toes both towards each other and then away from each other, how do both sides feel? If you're turning the legs towards each other and one leg turns in which the other one doesn't, the one that doesn't turn in is important to us. That hip is not being allowed to move in the right direction for your pelvis to move over the top of that hip during the run. It puts a, a strain on the leg which turns the leg outwards. It puts a stress both on the inside of the knee because the knee is being asked to twist as it runs and on the outside of the knee because the muscles will tighten the, the band that runs down the side of the leg and that's then going to flick over the side of the knee and cause it pain. It also means the kneecap can't quite track in the right direction in which case you can get some of that knee pain at the front of the knee as well. So when you look at the ankle and do you have the right movement forward and backwards of the ankle and the hip and can you turn the hips inwards in particular, but also outwards because they want to be symmetrical on both sides. The final test to look at is what's happening with the upper body. So if you stand square onto a mirror and have both arms absolutely straight in front of you, and then with one hand, you're going to pull the hand back towards the shoulder, twisting the upper body, keeping the pelvis straight and back to the front. So back to, back to the level with the opposite side, back to the front. Then you take the opposite hand, pulling back again. So it's level with that shoulder, turning the upper body, keeping the pelvis straight and bringing the hands back level again. Which side felt easier? Was there a restriction on one side compared to the other? The importance behind that is if the upper body is not allowed to turn, that can have a knock-on effect to the lower body and make running more problematic. So if you are finding that, you do have a restriction in the ankles, you can stretch using the test that I've just shown you. If you've got a restriction in the hip and you're turning in and it's not, it's not liking it, Dan's gonna cover a couple of movements that will help us get the, 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 this area moving. If the upper body is being problematic, you want to make sure that you're moving the upper body but I'm going to hand over to Dan, who's going to give you a little bit of an oversight of some, uh, some strength and conditioning or, or core training that you can do. Uh, if you are experiencing pain, you do have to stop for any period of time, get the body moving in the right way. You can keep testing using my test to see how well you're doing. And effectively, it should show you uh, that you can go back into running and the pain shouldn't be occurring, uh, I would say, as frequently or with as great intensity. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, so um, when we've got our body in, into a better state and uh, the injury are causing as much quickly and gone, um, you're performing the tests that Dave has done uh, and they've shown you, um, and the body is responding well and you're not getting those sort of tight areas or any impingements, um, we would look to incorporate uh, some level of cross training alongside your running. So by cross-training, I mean strength and conditioning. Um, and this is where we're going to incorporate using things like dumbbells, kettlebells, barbells, and weighted implements to get us stronger. Now, the reason we need to be stronger um, is because we need stability from the muscles around the joint. Okay, so the stronger the muscles, generally the stronger the, the joints are going to be, especially when we're doing a high-impact movement like running, which requires a lot of balance and coordination. Um, the stronger we are, um, within reason that generally we are going to be uh, better runners and strength does create robustness within the body. So when I'm developing uh, a, a program for you know new runners or people who are new to strength, I like to keep it super simple. I like to keep uh, the compounds, uh, so the movements compound movements. So I mean multi-joint movements where we're going to be using hips, ankles, knees, and potentially incorporating some core as well. So I would introduce squats into your program. So squats can be, you can use weighted implement or you can use body weight, depending on your ability. I would look to introduce lunges. So we touched on lunges in our last webinar. Um, so it's gonna be single leg, uh, leg. And again, we can do that body weight or we can introduce um, some weighted implements. Um, I'd also bring in a level of core work. 
And it's really important that the core and the trunk is stabilizing the spine and the hips as much as possible when we are running. So things like um, Pilates exercises um, and specific core exercises are gonna really help stabilize you while you're running. And again, we don't wanna leave the upper body out, okay? So when we run, there is an element of turning through the body and we are using um, our arms while we run. So I would try and incorporate a pressing exercise or a pushing overhead exercise back to back with a pulling exercise um, because this is gonna help our posture as well, especially the pull-in side of things. That's gonna create strength in the upper back. Hopefully we're gonna loosen out through, through the chest and then we're gonna be in a much better upright running position. Um, so again, we don't wanna overdo the amount of strength training we do if running is our modality that we want to work towards improving. Um, so I would probably try and hit tw uh, two sessions a week um, alongside running. So again, you're probably gonna hit three to four sessions a week. Um, and as we get better at running, we can introduce longer runs, um, potentially quicker runs, and also more running sessions throughout the working week. So what I'm gonna do now is hand you back over to Dave, just to finish off with a few other points um, with regard to flexibility and mobility for runners. Uh, so these are great points, Dan's saying squats, compound movements, lunges. If we're doing those, uh, they, we should be getting the body moving in the right directions. If you're doing those and retesting the tests that I've just asked you to do, hopefully what you're going to see is a difference in the test. You're going to see that actually you are getting symmetry in the movement of the hips. You are getting symmetry in the movement of the arms and that both, so both ankles as you're testing them are starting to feel better and better and better. Something to take away from today is the fact that uh, obviously if you are running and you're starting to feel pain, if you're feeling pain later on in the run, then you can still run. You just have to diminish the length of run you're doing. If you're feeling pain at the onset of the run, and particularly it's getting worse, you do need to stop. You do need to have that rest period. Do the tests that I've asked you to do and start doing Dan's exercises. As Dan says, you can do them twice a week, but at the end of the day, you can do them twice a day if you're not running. It's just if you are running, you want to decrease the, uh, the frequency with which you're doing those compound exercises that Dan's talked about. From a general overview, if you are getting positive tests of the ankle, you stretch out the muscles in the stretch position that I showed, that I talked about rather. If you are getting a tension around the hips, then what you can do is keep on going into those positions and see if you can ask the, the, the feet to move into a better symmetrical position. Uh, you can stretch the hip. You, uh, there's lots of things on the internet as to how to stretch a hip. Uh, if you do uh, a, uh, I'll sort of stand back to show you this. If you're lifting the knee upwards and putting it across the body, it's a really nice way of stretching into the back of the hip, particularly if you're restricted with the, the toes coming in towards each other. With the upper body, Dan's talked about it, push exercises and pull exercises. Make sure you're using both sides symmetrically, because if we are using them symmetrically, then what we'll get is we'll get a better fluency of running when you are uh, back on the street. As you do return to running, start gently, build up again, and just listen to your body and work out what's happening. Look at those areas. Are you turning that leg out? Can you try and keep the, the feet pointing straight ahead? Uh, are you, uh, with your running pattern, what happens if you lengthen the stride, or if you shorten the stride? So if there is a bit of tightness around the ankle, how far you're striding on your run will make a difference as to when that pain comes off. From my perspective, we hope you don't have any pains or problems when you run. If you do have pains or problems, use the tests we've talked about in the first, uh, first talk and these tests, bring them together, see what's happening with the body, get an, get an understanding of your own body by doing these tests. My three takeaway points from today are an ankle test, which is to do a calf stretch, stand against the wall, straight leg at the back, then a bent leg at the back, see if there's restriction one side compared to the other. Second point is around the hip, stand, both feet, both feet pointing towards each other, turn the toes to point towards each other, turn them away from each other. Again, are they symmetrical? Do I need to do some hip stretching? Then you're gonna stand, arms absolutely out in front of you, take one hand backwards, then bring it level with the opposite hand, take the other hand backwards, bring it level with the opposite hand. Do they feel the same or do I have a restricted movement in the upper body and the shoulder on one side compared to the other? In which case, do I need to do some more upper body work, incorporate what Dan's already said, but you can always sit and stretch and rotate and sitting in your chair and turning one direction, the other direction, 
try and stretch the upper body so it's moving symmetrically. They're my takeaway points. I'm going to hand back to Dan. Point for me uh, to take away is don't uh, force yourself to run through pain. Um, if you are getting those really sharp pains um, or something you really aren't used to, just stop your run there and just have a look into it. You, you don't need to carry on running. Um, secondly, you can't go wrong with getting strong. Get stronger um, and it will help develop your running technique and hopefully prevent injuries. And finally, if you do um, start hitting some roadblocks or hitting some injuries and things like that, just take a, back, uh, take a step back, maybe get in touch with somebody like Dave or myself, try and work out what the issue is, and then we can develop a plan for you moving forward from there. Thanks, Dan. Hopefully that wraps up what we, the information we can give you in this session today. Uh, we're going to keep talking in the future. What happens if you want to, if, you, if you're an intermediate runner? What happens if you're a more advanced runner? Uh, what happens if you are still getting these niggles and what you've done at the moment are, isn't, isn't sorting that out? We've got lots of information to give. We're looking forward to giving it. So keep an eye out for, for, our, for our future episodes. Uh, in the meantime, it's just time for me to say uh, goodbye and stay safe. And hopefully see you all soon.